mean, but you would agree that like 99% of the mutations are either neutral or harmful, right? Uh, no, I wouldn't say 99%. I mean, well, I mean, maybe it is that, but that doesn't really matter because we have natural. Yeah, right, even, so even if only 1% of them are beneficial, well, okay, which mutations are going to be selected for? The beneficial ones. So if you have a population of a million organisms and only 1% of them have the more beneficial mutations, then they're going to be selected for in that environment. Um, so it can still drive a, a change in them. The only, the only argument you could come up with with that is, well, if most mutations are harmful, then that would just cause the population numbers to crash because there wouldn't be enough beneficial mutations for the population to maintain. And so the species would just go extinct. And it's like, okay, let me grant you that that's how it works. We know for a fact that mutations happen. So this must mean that every single population on earth is dying. That's not the case. So the logic of the argument is just so self-evidently defeated that I don't understand where we're going. Yeah, no, I mean, the response to that would just be, okay, so, like, the reason I asked about the 99% of mutations, okay, would be is, is that, so 99% of the mutations are either neutral or harmful. I mean, and you, again, you can, we can call it, let's say 90%, just for a sake of argument. I mean, we could say that. Also, sorry, my son is opening up a bag of chips next to me. I uh, just, I don't know if you hear that or not. Oh, just a moment. Sorry, yeah, yeah, so, so. Um, what else, what I was going to say was, is that, so the problem is that like for the human brain, for example, okay, obviously this has like billions of neurons. I mean, they're basically wired in time by dozens of gene networks. I mean, a, a single mutation won't improve intelligence unless it's matched by many others. Daddy, can you open this? So yeah, I can open it. <laughs> yeah, I, actually, I, might, I might have to get going. I mean, my son next year will woke up and he wants a snack, but, um, so like, there you go. There's that. Um. I mean, the thing is, is that a, so a single mutation won't improve intelligence unless it's matched by many, many others. And again, there's billions of neurons that are firing at the same time. So that would, it, it, that's statistically impossible by chance, because you have billions of neurons. Um, you have do, it's being functioned by dozens of gene networks. So you'd have to. So you're saying it, they they would all have to be beneficial in the same kind of way. Cor um, correct. I mean, like if, yeah. if, if the argument was that 50 percent of mutations were neutral or harmful, you'd have a much better argumentation, but. I believe the consensus in most, like, you know, in, in, out there is that 99% are either harmful or they're just neutral. You'd have to have billions of, like, per, of beneficial uh, mutations occurring to create this network of the brain um, mm -hmm. you know, for, for mutations. I mean, again, obviously, it all comes down to 1%, sure. I guess over time, it could occur. But. So that's that's a good argument i've i've never heard anybody say it that way before if a trait is polygenic then all of the traits that control for it have to be positive or it doesn't um um so you it, what you're doing is you're multiplying low probabilities 1% times 1% times 1% times 1% is 0.000000 that's a i've never heard that before that's a good argument um, but I still, I, th I think it falls apart because what can happen is even if a trait is polygenic, uh, one, all, all you need is one gene that, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, um, contributes to that trait. Only one of them needs to change for it to have fairly dramatic downstream effects because the thing about polygenic traits is it, if one of those genes slightly modifies the expression of another gene that can slightly modify the expression of all the others. So we don't require a mutation in all of the genes that contribute to a trait. We really uh -huh. just need one and it's downstream effects can be really dramatic. Um, well, no, yeah, I want to, I want to say there example, may be example, some examples of that, but I can't think of any off the top of my head. Yeah, I mean, no, I agree with you 
to an extent, yeah. I mean, obviously, like, like a change in eye color, for example, that's like a or a specific trait that can just be changed by a single gene mutation. You know, obviously, it can cause no- noticeable change. Um, right. But obviously, again, the reason I would mention the brain is the the brain depends on like you know uh, many, many, many genes working together in in highly coordinated ways. Um, Changing one yeah. gene can even cause problems because genes often they interact and, and a mutation might disrupt other important functions. So that's why it's like when it comes to the brain, the brain is very complex and the, the changing of a gene affecting um, or disrupting other functions would mean they would have to perform perfectly. They'd have to be not only beneficial, but almost like, um, you know, they have to be, I don't know how to say it, but you know, like properly, but they, they have to have different layers to that. And uh, anyway, man, I really do appreciate the conversation with you. I, my son's up, so... Um, I have to get going to him, but I, I'll shoot you a follow. I'll come back if you don't mind. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, man. Um, I'll just, uh, I was gonna, God, it's making me, we've detected inactivity. I'm literally sitting here talking. So what do you mean inactivity? Um, another detail I would add to this is, you know, what he's talking about kind of ignores the gradualism. So, you know, human brains haven't always existed. We have ancestors that had, I mean, like the, the tissue is the same, you know, and even the genes that control for it are still conserved. We know thanks to embryonic, uh, experiments that you can literally take a patch of tissue from the embryo of a completely different species. Like it can literally be, you can do amphibian to chicken, uh, transplants. So I, I can take a patch of tissue from a developing embryo in one species, transplant it onto the other species, and it'll trigger that species to wherever you did the patch, um, grow that kind of tissue. So you can take frog embryo tissue and from like where it's going to develop a limb and put that on a chicken embryo and the chicken will grow a chicken wing in a place that it's not supposed to, for example. Um, kind of lost my train of thought with that, but anyways, um, it kind of ignores the concept of gradualism, but the other thing is with the, it has, there have to be all these mutations that all work, uh, with, with simpler organisms, what we consider simpler organisms, uh, one of the facts with them is they tend to breed in massive numbers. So like, for example, insects or many, many other types of invertebrates. Well, for organisms like us, we don't breed nearly as much. Same with any really most vertebrates except for fish. So you, there, there is kind of this, uh, good line of reasoning that says something like, well, we can't afford to just do all these kinds of crazy permutations of, of the traits because the odds are that's going to produce something that doesn't necessarily work nearly as well. But something we know about species is some species have highly conserved genomes and other species don't. And the species that do not have highly conserved genomes tend to be ones that are more simple and reproduce in incredible numbers. There can, along the way in the story of evolution, there can be uh, the, not concept of, but the the fact of genomic conservation would be the word. I don't know. I don't know what the term for it would be, but, but the, 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 the evolution of the genome being more conserved um, can appear, and then it, in populations or species, I should say, that uh, don't reproduce in as huge a number, and then this, you know, problem isn't really that much of a problem. So hopefully, I articulated that well enough that it makes sense. <laughs>